Hello, Liberty. I hope you're having a good week. I hope you got to spend some time out in that nice weather, enjoying the sunshine and the warmth. The snow is back and the cold is back, but I've been promised that North Dakota does have a warm season, so we look forward to the summer and getting outdoors and, and getting in the sun. And Last week, Brian spoke on how God is in control, and there is one plan that is true, and that's God's plan. And I also wanted to hit on another truth, is that our mission as the church does not change. We are still the disciples of God, and we are still the body of Christ. And when we look at the early church, when we look at Jesus has ascended, and he is given the Great Commission, and then the book of Acts, it gives us this picture of the body, starting in chapter 2, starting in verse 44, it says, And all who believed were together, and had all things in common. <clears throat> And they were selling their possessions and belongings and distributing the proceeds to all as any had need. And day by day, attending the temple together and breaking bread in their homes. They received their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having favor with all people. And the Lord added to their number day by day those who were being saved. You see, just because there's this coronavirus, just because we're all called to stay at home and be in our homes and avoid contact, doesn't mean our necessity to being the body of Christ goes away. We still need this community, right? As a kid, I learned this, this little saying, and I, you're supposed to do something with your hands, I don't remember, but it says, here's the church, here's the steeple, open the doors, and there are the people. Right? And what this tells us is that the church is people. <clears throat> it's a social event. This is not just some brick and mortar building. So we are still called to commune. We are still called to be the people of Christ. And when we look here in Acts, it gives us some very tangible ways to do that. One of those ways is definitely by looking out for each other and each other's needs. One of the best things we can do during this time is seek out brothers and sisters and ensure that no one has a need. I mean, it's, it's kind of silly, but there is a toilet paper shortage. And if you don't go to uh, CashWise at 7 a.m. on a Tuesday and ask for toilet paper, you might miss out. So we can help each other by offering toilet paper and that's a silly example but it's the point that especially in these harder times or these just more confusing times this is when we should be coming together when we should be giving our proceeds to help each other and so I encourage you seek out a brother seek out a sister if you need help and if you are someone who has maybe a little more go ahead and, and see if anyone needs anything because that's what we're called to do that's what this early church was doing and now it says they met in the temple every day. Well, our temple doors are closed, right? Here's the church, here's the steeple, open the doors, and there's no people. Well, how do we get around that? Well, we can often talk about all the bad things about technology, but a really good thing is that we can still communicate, and we have been. I know many groups have been meeting. I know you have already been calling each other and talking to each other, but now let's push for that more. Call that brother or sister that's on your heart. Email them. Video them. We need to get creative to find ways to be the body because it's essential. It is all over the Gospels and Acts and Ephesians. I mean, even Paul writing letters to the churches was just ensuring that we need to be the body of Christ. We need to be in community. So I encourage you, I encourage us as a body, reach out to each other. Whether it's by phone, email, video, some way, just seek the body of Christ. Seek to be in community with each other.